So, um, let's move on to the next presentation of uh, this uh, conference uh, and, um, and how Frogan's technology uh, can be applied and, and used and how it could in the future change the way we work, uh, the way we do a lot of other things in life. I would like to ask two members from Esther to uh, join, join us. Esther is one of our partners. We've been working with Esther for um, to, to, to examine potential uses of Brogan's uh, technology going forward. Etienne and Lola, welcome. Etienne, bienvenue. Etienne, welcome to you. Um, why don't you introduce yourself first? And uh, I think you wanted to share a demo with us. Uh, we have uh, workstations that have that have been set up on the uh, on the left side, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, the technical problem we have been experiencing so far will um, will disappear. Etienne, over to you. Thank you. Very briefly, let me tell you a little bit who uh, who we are at uh, Aster. Uh, I'll try to do things a little different uh, differently from uh, the, the previous conference. Aster is uh, the first initiative uh, within Frogan's technology um, around different usages uses. So we are a contributor of OP3FT, but we're independent. So we were here last time, and we're here again this time. So we are an interdisciplinary group with different types of expertise, typography, design, interface design, law, strategic uh, planning, communication, I work on research um, and professional uh, communication. Lola Aubert is, uh, is responsible for the communication part and IT, of course. So the driving force is uses. Uh, how can these upcoming technologies, the fragrance technology, be used? It's a question that itched us <laughs> from the outset, uh, as soon as the technology emerged. Oftentimes we hear about users, uh, the public, uh, everyone is interested in, in, in understanding how uh, people would use it, but uh, it's never really been in investigated. So we think uh, what's at stake, uh, that the technology, I'm sorry, that the technology will only, can only be successful if, if, if people really own it. Uh, so depending on how people use it. So we've been working on how the Frogan's technology could be used. We've been uh, reflecting upon the strategy. And uh, how the strategy could be developed. And uh, the last dimension, which is uh, fully part of, of the previous ones, is experimenting. I just explained that we have done some strategic thinking, but along with that, we need to, uh, it's important to do, to analyze concrete objects. We did that also. 
euh, central ou disons un point euh, euh, d'acmé dans la technologie. On, on sait qu'elle peut ou qu'elle va être adoptée. La question, c'est comment On aura l'occasion d'y revenir un petit peu plus tard dans la soirée. Euh, mais pour l'immédiat, euh, je rappelle ce que j'avais dit grosso modo euh, à la Frogans Technology Conference 3. Euh, j'avais lancé trois chantiers de réflexion et chantiers de, de passage à l'action pour Aester. Il s'agissait d'expérimenter des formes possibles d'après les contraintes et d'après les opportunités ou les propriétés de cette technologie. Euh, on avait euh, mis en avant euh, d'abord une propriété. Forward was to have a recurrent property for this technology, which is that of graphics reliability of the images as produced with the Frogans technology, and that led us to having the first object that we analyzed, it had nothing to do with digital technologies because it's paper and we said we would work on flyers. But that was a way to initiate reflection. We took uh, objects that were well connected to social use and we wanted to confront them to technology to see what the, the, the output would be. And we also made a commitment to work on slideshows because we all know what a slideshow is whether it be in our computers or in uh, uh, the uh, very old uh, type of um, slight carousels. But this is a successive presentation. And earlier I was using an image. I said uh, you had to confront communication to the constraints and properties of a technology to see what would come out. And from this confrontation, We obtained results and by working on flyers, we had to be very specific with regards to what was important for us because flyers is all about graphic communication, reliable graphic communication to afford uh, easy recognition of a brand. If you've seen the first demo, there was at one stage the screen was not perfect and you had an Apple screen multiplied by two in height and very narrow. This is a non-reliable communication and Frogans and the Frogans technology is not at stake. What's at stake is the overhead projector here and we can't make a promise we are 100% reliable anyway. So then we left flyers and we moved to something else, which is the first project, first prototype, very simple one because it only includes two images, two slides. And that's a plane ticket. Be careful, I think. Okay, that's better. Uh, wait before you click. Wait a second before you click. As we have two states only, I'd rather sp spend a bit of time on each of them. So, as this was the first mock-up that we produced, we took small elements. So, quite clearly here, the image is not square. The margins are very precise, very accurate. Maybe you can't see that with the pro overhead projector, but the contouring is very clear, very sharp. So this can only be a click button, because the, but the entire slide can be activated. So you can do that now. So this was a model of what a, an airline ticket would be. So we took an old design that's a luggage tag that we took from Swiss Air. It's kind of an old one. It's kind of a vintage object today. But what's interesting with such a thing is that we worked on the font and as it's a tag, It has to have a hole. So if you move it, maybe you can see that the small hole is transparent. 
should be. Maybe you don't see it very well. So you see it transparent now. Likewise, the uh, edges are not perfectly square. So it's interesting in terms of strategy, because if we have e-tickets, which are easy to download, even in uh, limited networks, especially on a train, for instance, where you have uh, uh, kind of white zones. But, well, you can download your train ticket easily and in a faster way, and you can make sure that there is one ticket per person, a ticket that everyone can keep. And there is this aesthetics, which I quite like. I think it's beautiful. And regarding strategies for Frogans, one of the most promising thing is that you have, you're dealing with objects that remain unique and spectacular in their design. Unique because this is something you can't find otherwise. And spectacular because they pop up very quickly with the same level of efficacy. So now, idem quest at que erat. It is the same as it used to be. This is the first prototype. I can't remember what size shrinkage uh, gives on this object. I can't remember. Aurelian, could you please modify the size? OK. Uh, there is just one state, but you see as a signature on a desktop, it's quite nice. And uh, OK, some might argue that you don't always uh, have your, com your computer when you get on board a plane, but you can find it on your mobile phone with the same level of quality. So moving to the uh, second object, we've not changed anything to the project. We kept the same idea. And the infomercial looked to, as a good opportunity for us, because when you work and you have many apps being open, you, you can have your Frogan's Player app open as well. And that gives you the opportunity of following an event as it unfolds. This was to enhance the value of one property that Frogan's sites uh, will display when the technology is fully uh, disseminated, you have a rather fast refresh of the sites via the server. So that's an image that could replace another one when a specific alert is given. So this is a small site given for, to provide information about the earthquake in Nepal. And the information bubbles you have can send you back to different objects. At the top left, you have the link to the web browser and to the uh, full article, full-length article. If uh, there is an article in the newspaper like Le Monde, you can have the link. And here in this balloon, which you can click on, you have the short news, which you can drag and drop to get more comprehensive information. Now, if you move the slide, you'll see how we get the transparency effect in it. So, you see, we'd need to have plenty of applications open to see what what it is. So you can imagine what it gives when you're working on, on your desktop and you have this uh, kind of companion piece that keeps you updated. And as it's an information website and that gives you uh, contextualized information. You can have uh, info, a map like here, so that you know exactly where the thing is going on. So Frogan's site like this can include all the work from a newsroom and the post-editing department can also generate content. And you have other elements, you can click, for instance, yes, why not? This one. And these. this is a slideshow that could start here. Yeah. 
and another uh, article. This is a verbatim. What you can see here, that's a series of articles that provide you with uh, things that were actually said by people about this event. And then the last uh, current headlines for this specific topic, the earthquake, but you would have the same for politics, uh, science, etc., etc. So what's interesting is that you can see that here you have many visual objects, the basic object being a picture or a photograph which is contoured. But here you have others, which can be text elements with scrolling. You have one which is a map. And as we are dealing with images of different sizes, different shapes, all this gives a different aspect to the news, very different from what you can find elsewhere. I mean, the eye is not attracted as on a site which is refreshed in a web navigator and it doesn't work the same way and it's not handled in the same way either. So you see how refreshing allows managing a news uh, thread and you see how it could help uh, managing discussions as well. But we chose this because uh, there was a lot of information and different types of information. And when we talk about users and um, ownership, uh, the question is, how can we provide information with such a technology? And I think you can see that clearly thanks to this work that we did with our group. Now, I'd like to talk about a third object that we worked on. It's a slideshow. This time, the uh, n network name is different. It's Nuance Star. No, don't launch it right now. So for this one, we had quite a large number of projects. We met interesting people who gave us an idea. And we took this opportunity because it's a very specific technology with a specific use. So in fact, we wanted to map navigation, make navigation be meaningful for users. We wanted it to be available on many uh, different uh, devices like a mobile phone. And we didn't want to create a, a slideshow like for a fashion show, but something that would be more committing for users. So, for instance, I have a color, like certain websites would offer you a different shades. If I have this color in my dining room, how can I choose other colors to match? And what kind of paint should I choose for my walls, etc., etc.? So we said, OK, we're going to offer these color range, but not the way you find them in shops, because it's not very handy. So we want a solution so that step by step, I know exactly what I'm going to, to do. So let's take a look. So that's a proposition by the object with the transparency effects. The Frogans is made up of a certain number of bubbles that you can move around and superimpose on whatever you please. And these color bubbles are suggestions on which you can click. Maybe not all of them. So once you've clicked on a balloon, that leads you to another color proposal because the colors here are those with which I could match the first one. So I keep the yellow bubble as active. 
I can't see the effect of depth here, but I say, okay, with my yellow, I'd like to have uh, red. And now this red and yellow have uh, generated other bubbles, which I can match. And the same thing works here. Likewise, if I click on red again, so each time you have colors which are complementary colors or in similar types of shades. And at the end, you have the range of colors that you've selected. So from this, you can easily imagine that on a mobile device, whether a telephone or a watch, you get the result with the different colors you want to have at home. And this is something I can carry around with me everywhere, including when I choose my car at the car dealer. So these are the three projects we worked on with ASTAR, and more specifically, thanks to Frank NBI, Louis-Jean Castelbaum, and the incredible support from Maxime Boucher. But by and large, this, these are strategic and communication efforts that we made to try and show what it would look like what we can do together when, as a group, we start thinking about strategy and use. There is not much doubt. These are things that reflect potential uses. It doesn't mean that I just need to display that and that get a crowd jumping on my project. Now, the major question will be, what shall we do that would have a meaning and that would be related to a need. So if you'd like to meet with us and discuss about this type of challenges when we have our networking session, well, we would be delighted. And this, during this networking time, after the networking time at 9.15, you'll have another member of our group who will give you a scientific lecture and talk about social ownership of a new technology. That's Gustavo. And he will try and demonstrate how youth theory and communication theories have isolated as key drivers for social ownership. When mobile phones or other objects, when they're adopted, how they're used, what's a use, what's an acceptable use, what's a creative use. This is something we'll talk about later, so I encourage you to stay because it's going to be very interesting. Thank you so much, Etienne. Etienne, I take this opportunity to thank you personally because it's been quite a while since we last met. We. Uh, talked by email, but uh, since the last conference, your group, you and your colleagues from Esther, you set up your group, you have a website, it's esther.eu, and I wanted to talk to you before we take some questions about the creative process and the way you develop these uh, Frogan's uh, mock-ups, because the FSDL Frogan site uh, language is not yet available to end users and to Frogan site publishers, like the Frogan's player, is not yet available for download. We are still working in a project uh, mode where things are done via very specific development steps. At the moment, we gave priority to entrepreneurs, but we met during the second FTC, then we talked. When I say we, it's OP3FT, it's not just me, obviously. And you came to offer your first ideas, and OP3FT 
made a slide generator available to you that w was kind of an emulator of Frogan's uh, site. So I wanted to say a few words about this uh, publishing process that will obviously be different as compared to Frogan's site publishing as such. Yes, because we first worked on graphics, then we had the integration in GenSlate, which is the software in the OP3FT in, that's used to emulate or simulate Frogan's site. But it doesn't work on the on the on internet. Some compatibilities are not visible, like refresh, for instance. But it allowed us to design mockups that would be more than just graphic mockups. So it was a great opportunity given to us by OP3, OP3FT to develop something that would look like this. But it's just the beginning. So I want to thank you all for this. And the second thing is, what did it mean in terms of implementation for our different projects from a strategic perspective? And for all investigations related to communication modes, there is not much that changes that's different as compared to a technical framework, but it required a separate processing of the image and treatment. We had to make adjustments in terms of skills and competences. But this was a first test, and that gives me an opportunity to refocus on the idea of contributions. We have made recommendations as a contributor. We made recommendations to OP3FT, whether about functionalities or with regards to the uh, layout. So that's how we contributed. And on the other side, we're also producers and testers, but also producers. And we can be part and parcel of those who will work with the Frogan sites in the future. Thank you so much. I just wanted to come back to what you said when you said you are contributors. That's very interesting because that's one of the concepts of OP3FT. And by the way, if you log on the website of OP3FT, please take a look at the charter of contributors for the Frogan's technology, where you will discover how you can take part and contribute to developing the Frogan's project and how you can invent things, how you can share ideas, and you will get an overview of the way we see the development of the Frogan's technology with our working groups, our research teams, our development tools, because this piece of software you were talking about, Aurelian, is a rendering engine that we use in OP3FT for development purposes. Yeah, Aurelien, if you want to say a few words about this small tool. Now, all I was saying is that the sites that we presented earlier and all the demos, everything's done with the same uh, rendering engine, so, but I have nothing else that I wanted to add. Thank you very much, Aurelien. So if publishers of Frogan sites are interested in making a first test of the Frogan site, Site. Of course, we're open for discussion. And it would even be more interesting for future publishers of people having an interest in Frogan sites to talk to you directly, Esther, and to get your expertise. Because as for us at OP3FT, we don't have it because we're not developers of Frogan's sites. What we do is that we make this technology available to people, to you, so that you can create new and ambitious things like Esther does. But as you all know, we have uh, 
discussion lists where you can post your messages. And of course, the OP3FT will answer to any of your questions should you require further information about the Frogan site. Etienne, we still have a bit of time. Thanks again for these uh, wonderful prototypes. They're all together beautiful, simple, and innovative in terms of use. I also know that in your bags you have many, in, in your pipelines you have many other ideas. And I think you have contacts already with content publishers. So let's take a few questions, if any. Let's take a few questions from the audience. If I may, I don't think we've seen the small formats, have we? Well, we need to look which ones you're talking about. OK, so a certain number of elements disappear because the bubbles kind of blend one with the other. Perfect. I know we have other questions. Back in the days of the Minitel, we were talking about services. Uh, at the moment, we talk with web, we talk about sites. I, f I think it's so sad that you use this word again. I would have liked it for you to use another word, whatever word you want, because it's something totally different. Personally, but also on behalf of Esther, I fully agree with what you just said. And you probably heard as to people cheering up when they heard your comment because they fully agree with you. Well, I say a Frogan's side, or I say a Frogan's, knowing that it's not strictly orthodox to talk like this. We started thinking about words. I think the idea of map would be interesting, but the problem is that the word map is already used. We've produced a certain number of words to try and call these objects, but so far we've had a difficult time. But obviously the words sites and slides do not correspond to what this is, and are poor descriptors of what it could become because talking about a slide, that brings us back to other states and to office work, basically. But as ASTA, I can say that it's a problem to me. Where does Frogans come from for the name? Well, for those of you who have not heard the question, I'm repeating the question. Well, Frogans is a name that was invented. Hi. So the word Frogans was invented at the beginning of the project 15 years ago to try and give a name to this technology so that it would not look like anything that existed already. And if you go to Web Archive, which is the website that uh, collects all old publications, you'll see that on the first Frogans site, you'll see that it was called A Frogans. So the way Esther and other players in the ecosystem will rename and use this technology will probably uh, gravitate around this uh, invented word. So it was invented because we needed to find a word that uh, was not related to any occurrence in search engines, that would not be an insulting word in any language in the world, 
And little by little, we ended up using this word. I think that was back in 2000. And now, with regards to terminology, what we try to do as OP3FT is to try and do something very concrete. So these are basically sites. Pages are hosted on servers, like the pages of a website. So technically, when you click a button on a Frogan site, you consult a page which is hosted on a server, remote server, which is then displayed locally. So why did we use the word site? Well, because in the history of the project, we talked about the idea of apps, which emerged very quickly because of mobile uh, devices. And this is when we understood that we had to clarify things. Because the Frogan's technology is an online publishing technology with uh, distributed contents. You can put your Frogan site anywhere. It can be hosted in Japan, in France, in Japan, at home, if you want. So in fact, this technical clarification was required in the functional layers of the internet in the operational layers. Now, I think that uh, people will take ownership by changing the word. And the, the word slide that was chosen to illustrate the page was chosen not to use the word page. So we used slides. Now we talk about Frogan's slide description language. And when you've chosen uh, an acronym for a language, it's difficult to change it. But we would if it was necessary. Thank you very much, Alexei. Thank you for this explanation. I think you all realized through this explanation that even language issues are keeping OP3FT very busy. That's part of the uh, work that we also carry out at OP3FT. Now, thank you very much indeed, Esther, for this uh, presentation. I think I remember this commercial that says it's our clients who talk about it best. And I can see that our pioneers, our users are those who can talk about it best. Your demos, your prototypes uh, tell a lot about the true potential of the Frogan's technology. Thank you very much indeed. Merci à Etienne. Merci. Thank you, Etienne. Thank you, Lola. And also thank you to the other Esther members. I apologize. I cannot remember your, all your names. Thank you, Aurélien Azouaille, who's a, a project manager at uh, OP3FT. Thank you to Alexander Camas, who's a, a creator of the uh, uh, technology. Thank you, Stefan, for you're the ambassador of the, pro, uh, the Frogans uh, program. And of course, I would like to thank all the other people who uh, were part of this first of this first um, part of the program. Thank you also to the audience. Stefan, time has come for a break. Food and drinks will be served. For those of you who are with us online, who are following the streaming. We will be back in approximately one hour, around 8 p.m. for the second part of the conference. Thank you.